Okay, so uh, recently I posted a jam track uh, video on this channel for the song Wagon Wheel, and uh, several folks have asked for a tutorial uh, for that, for a lead break uh, for Wagon Wheel. So that is what I'm going to be teaching you today. Uh, actually, three different ways of playing it. Um, as you probably know, Wagon Wheel is a super popular song, uh, arguably the most popular song in recent decades uh, that features a banjo. And if you are out in public and caught with your banjo, uh, chances are people are going to expect you to know how to play it. So now's your chance. Um, it's also a really great song for learning, uh, for sort of practicing the fundamentals of banjo. It's not too melodically complicated, not too harmonically complicated. It's usually played at a slower tempo, uh, which removes the impulse to try to play it faster than you should. Uh, so all in, around, all in all, a great tune for learning. Um, it, is, it was originally recorded in the key of A uh, by Old Crow Medicine Show, and that's where we're going to be playing it here. Uh, so we're going to be in AEA C-sharp E tuning, which is... Uh, standard G tuning just raised two frets. And you can, uh, you can do that either by tuning each of your strings directly from G, D, G, B, D to A, E, A, C sharp, E, or by using a capo at the second fret and either capoing or tuning your fifth string up uh, to A. All that matters is that in the end, however you get there, that each of your strings is tuned to those pitches. So fifth string should be an A, and you should verify this with your tuner. Okay, fourth string is an E. Third string is an A. Second string is a C sharp. And fifth string, I mean, sorry, first, first string is an E. And again, I'm gonna be teaching this claw hammer style. All right. Our chords for this song, or our chord progression, is as follows. We have the one chord, the five chord, the six chord, the four chord, back to the one, five, four. And that repeats throughout the whole song, verse and chorus, and the melody for the verse and chorus is very similar. There's only, a, there's only small differences, but the chord progression is exactly the, the same. So again, our chords there, we have four of them. We have our one chord, which is just the open strings. Now, I'm gonna primarily use the Nashville numbers here because that's much clearer and easier to think about than talking about the specific names of these chords because we're capoed here. You may think of that as open strings and here is your G, right? Even though it's technically an A. All right, now we move to our five chord which is, to, is actually an E major in this particular key, but you may think of it as your D shape on the banjo. So again, removing all confusion, we just use the Nashville number system, and I strongly encourage you to get familiar with that system and to think in terms of that system rather than the actual n names of the, the letters of the chords. Um, much, much easier, much more efficient, um, and you'll find that's why also on the jam tracks you'll see the Nashville numbers listed in addition to their letter names. Okay, I'll use this partial uh, shape here, which is the second fret of the third string and the third fret of the second string, and leave the fourth and the first open typically um, to, so that I have that low, uh, low open string ringing out. So that's your, your, that's your five chord, then it moves to the six chord, which you may know as your E minor shape in G. All right, then it moves to the four chord, which you may know as your C shape. Back to the G, I mean back to the open, the one, then to the five, and to the four. Okay. Heading down south to the land of the pines, following my way in North Carolina. Heading down the road, and pray to God I see headlights. All right, that's your verse. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Okay, same chords. Okay, 
And the break that we're gonna learn first here is the one that kind of follows the melody for the chorus, even though verse, chorus are very similar. So we're gonna start with our first version. It'll be our simplest one. And all it requires us to do is change chords, bum ditty, and be strategic about where we hit the bum stroke on, what string we hit on the bum stroke. So it sounds like this. So I'm all I'm doing. All right, those are the melody notes that I'm hitting on the bump stroke and I'm just surrounding them with ditties, right? You could do all four on that fourth string, or you could alternate. Okay, so one more time, and I'll just call out the strings. Second string, twice. Switching chords. Third string, twice. Switching chords, second string, twice. Switching chords, second twin string, twice again. Strings now being fingered at the first fret. Uh, switching chords again. Switch chords. Now I am bringing my fourth uh, or my uh, uh, ring finger down onto the fourth fret of the fourth string so I can get that melody note. Play that twice. Switch chords. Fourth string again twice. Or actually four times if we want to, or alternate with the third string. Okay, so that's our first version, right? Bum ditties, following the chord changes, just being strategic about what strings we strike so that they fall along with the melody for the most part. Um, next version, we'll dress it up a little, keeping the, the picking hand, my right hand, the same, uh, but adding in some little embellishments with our um, picking hand, some slides and hammer-ons. All right, that sounds like this. Not too much work, but we get a lot of extra sounds out of it, okay? So we're starting with a slide from the second string to the fourth string on the third fret. All right, moving to an alternate string hammer on, I'm striking the open second, and then hammering on to the second fret of the third string as I'm moving my fingers into that partial chord shape. So all together. change chords. That's the same as before. We're going to hammer on when we move to that four chord shape. Hammer on from the open second to the first fret of the second string as we bring our fingers into that shape. Then back to open. Nothing's different there. And nothing's different here. Last chord, we're again going to hammer on, open fourth into second fret of the fourth string as we bring our fingers into that chord shape. An alternative way to do that part would be to walk down this fourth string. We're mirroring the vocals there. Mama, rock me. So from the from the preceding chord, all right. So that's another option. I'll play that one one more time.
okay? All right, and for this third version, we're gonna keep everything pretty much the same with our fretting hand, and we're gonna alternate the patterns that we use with our picking hand. So in addition to the bum ditty, we're gonna throw in a syncopated skip pattern, all right? So sounds like this. So it's starting with the bum ditty. And then I'm moving my hand down for another bum stroke, but I'm not actually gonna strike the strings. That's the skip part. Then I'm gonna bring my thumb into an inside string and strike that and then follow it with the ditty. So slowly it's. So if you're not familiar with drop thumbing or playing uh, skip strokes, Probably not quite the pattern for you to be trying yet before you kind of work on those fundamental elements. Um, there's a video all about skip strokes and syncopated skips, uh, but it's a super useful pattern. Works great for um, playing popular music and, and just backing up um, vocals in general. You can hear how well it fits this song. Heading down south to the land of the pines I'm thumbing my way in North Carolina Heading down the road, pray to God I see headlights Okay, so our solo version with that pattern thrown in sounds like this. Okay, so starts out with that, that particular uh, syncopated skip pattern with the slide, and then I'm gonna bring my thumb into the second string. All right, this one's same as before, we're back to bum ditty, and essentially we're gonna alternate that syncopated pattern with the regular bum ditty. Okay, that's the same as before. That's the syncopated pattern, so bringing my thumb into the second string, and then same as before, all right, syncopated pattern, thumbs into the third string, whoops, all right, this part's the same. This part, we're gonna syncopate it throughout, do the syncopated pattern throughout. And my thumb is coming into that second string every time. And you can really hear the difference, oh, the different kind of feel that gives versus the kind of straight ahead way of playing it uh, with just the bum ditty, which would be like this. It's kind of a lot, a lot more regular, a lot more marchy, which where this is kind of like you're taking a stroll down the street. All right, that's what that pattern uh, gives you is that nice, that syncopated feel, which gives you that sort of lollygagging type of rhythm. Um, and you can really lean into it if you want to. Make it super draggy if you want. So again, that's a break that's based on the melody for the chorus. The, the uh, verse in uh, Wagon Wheel, the melody is very similar, just has a bit of a difference right at the end. So I'm gonna show you those three different ways that I, you would play if you were gonna base it around the melody for the verse. And uh, I think you have enough to figure out how I'm doing each one. So here's, here's how the first uh, way would be. That's all the same. And that's a little bit different. Second way. Same. third way.
so those are your uh, three versions. And uh, I recommend, again, you know, choose the one that's kind of best for where you're at right now. Uh, that's the idea. That's the reason for having three is so you can uh, learn one that's that's kind of right for your level where you're at right now. And then also make sure to use the jam track to practice uh, uh, playing this, uh, playing this when it's kind of your turn to take a break. Um, but also uh, utilize the band, those jam tracks for things beyond just playing breaks. In fact, a big reason for creating those is to encourage folks to do things other than to try to play lead solos and to try to build all of the skills that make up being a musician. So working on all the perceptual, conceptual, and technical skills that are part of being a banjo player rather than just playing a song or playing an arrangement a way you've learned it. So again, it's great for just working on your rhythm and timing, just playing simple patterns with your hand while you're changing chords, just to work on locking in your rhythm, locking in your timing. Uh, it's great for just pat practicing um, chord changes. Um, for those of you who are in the Breakthrough Banjo course and you're learning the Bright Fretboard Mastery System, it's great for, for learning that and internalizing all those chord positions. So learning your Bright clusters at all the positions up and down the neck. So with this song, you have your one, six, four, and five chords uh, at first position like we've talked about. Then you practice it set practice at second position. Practice at third position and so on, I'm out of fretboard. And then you could also do the same, practicing your improvisation maps at each of those uh, spots along the, the fretboard um, using the bright um, improvisation maps. So again, a great, a great song for practicing that, also because it is nice and slow. All right, so there it is, Wagon Wheel, Three Ways. Again, if you have a banjo, you're gonna be expected to know it, so it's a great time to do so. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you enjoy this video and you like this channel, uh, like and subscribe to it. All right, see you later.